in all the uh, literature of esoteric Shaivism, all the ancient literature <clears throat> was written as a kind of a guide <clears throat> for people to, to organize their conversation. So you have all these works of tantric scripture, and they're beautiful. But the thing about them is that they were not intended to replace the actual conversation. They were meant to guide the conversation, not replace it. And so in the hands of translators who are fundamentally scholars and you know, and the, interestingly, in the case of most of the tantric translators, uh, they're fundamentally scholars who are, com who are, you know, at least ambivalent about the uh, message of the material, which makes it kind of boring to be in a conversation with them about it. So one book I wanted to recommend to you just to to maybe think about, because I read it not so long ago and I liked its perspective, and I thought it was speaking to um, a very similar understanding as, as the scripture that is the background of this practice, of our practice. I, like, I don't like to say this practice so much. I'd rather say my practice, right? So that, that message is basically that life and consciousness cannot occur in a random universe. It cannot occur in a random universe. An example is <clears throat> sort of in a random universe, if you had a, you put a room, um, you had a room and you put a, a monkey and a computer in it, how long would it take the monkey to write, let's say, one of Shakespeare's plays? I mean, the fact is, it would, there, is, there is, this guy generated a number. If a, something like, if a monkey touched the computer key every second for something like three million years, it might be able to produce a three-word phrase. And beyond that, it gets astronomical. So the point is that, that life, living beings, cannot occur in a random universe. This isn't a mixing together of a couple of chemicals over here and a chemical over there and shake it up real good and then heat it for a while and boom, you have life. That's not, that's not happening. This uh, idea was originally, I think, proposed by John Wheeler, who was a, a um, student of Oppenheimer's and a, and a colleague of his at the um, at Los Alamos when they were making the bomb. Wheeler went on to be a professor of, of theoretical physics at uh, Austin, Texas, University of Texas. And he called it anthropocentrism. It's, that has been changed now in recent years to biocentrism. And that's what the book is about, and that's sort of the name of it. The idea being that only a living universe can produce living beings. A living universe in which life is constantly interacting with itself, reorganizing itself, re-expressing itself. 
That means that everything, basically, I'm, now I'm going to like cut to the chase because I don't want to give you a three-hour talk. Basically, this means that everything there is to know about anything is already right in front of us. It's right with us. And the issue is, you know, our mind. Rudy said, the mind is the slayer of the soul. So, it kind of works like this. We have the possibility, the unimaginable possibility to experience the profundity of our own living awareness. And experiencing the profundity of our own living awareness you know, changes our mind and our heart forever. To do that, we have to be extremely positive. And I don't mean positive in the sense of, in the way Facebook is like, this isn't, this isn't a um, affirmation. This isn't a positive, oh, every day in every way I'm feeling better and better. It isn't like that. That, it, that, that aphorism may be a step to it, possibly, but it's not like that. This positivity is not a thought, it is a feeling. Remember, I gave a whole retreat, and the topic was lift your spirit. Well, that assumes you know what your spirit is, that you can feel your spirit, and then if you, if you know what your spirit is, if you can feel it, then it's not too hard to lift. It's like three breaths. Boom, 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 kabang. This isn't rocket science. I mean, it may be because I'm mentioning theoretical physics and biocentrism, which is, a, you know, an approach to theoretical physics. You might think it's rocket science, but it's not. This is so simple, it's unbelievable. It's so simple, it's so simple, we, we step on it 3,000 times a day. Actually, we, we step on it 26,000 times a day. So, in order to experience the profundity of our own awareness, we need to be extremely positive. To be extremely positive, we need to really get our mind under control. That's basic yoga, you know, 101. Well, after asana practice, and the point of asana practice, getting our mind under control. Getting our mind under control requires that we have to let go of a whole lot of shit. The disappointments of our ancestors, which, you know, limit us in terms of time and place and and physical circumstance, physiological circumstance, all of that we have to let go of. We just have to let go of it. And begin to engage ourselves, engage our body and our mind in a very simple way that, you know, over time allows us to train ourselves not to be totally tangled up in our thoughts not to be totally tangled up in our hopes and fears, but to be participating in the livingness of our own awareness. 
what does the livingness of our own awareness mean? I mean, that sounds, I, I like that. I never said that before, did I? I might have, but it sounds really cool to me. The livingness of our own awareness. That is our, the, the respiratory process that we are. That is our breath. And the respiratory process that is this physiology. This physiology is a respiratory process. It's a three-phase respiratory process. Food in, poop out. Breath in, blood circulates, metabolic byproducts out. Then there's a purely internal respiratory process, which is the fluctuation of the cerebral spinal fluid in the lymphatics. Universe in, universe out. Our mind is a respiratory process. Information in, wait, it's different than that. It's, senses extend to their objects, make contact, Change, because of that contact, change because of that information. The change that happens when your senses make contact with an object is called information. And that is, then your mind comes back to its own source, absorbing that information, provoking a shift again as information changes us and then extends itself again. And this is the living process of awareness that is not just going on in each of us, it's going on on the whole earth constantly, and actually this living awareness is the environment in which the universe is happening. In the same fashion that the atmospheres the atmospheres of the earth, because there's not just, there is one atmosphere, but it is, you know, from the, the core to the extent, it is a variety of temperatures and pressures which sustain varieties of life forms. Well, in the same sense that, you know, physi the physiological life of the earth, the physiological expression of the life that is the earth, you know, is the backdrop, the screen upon which, the atmosphere is the screen upon which all this is happening. Living awareness is the screen on which the whole universe takes place. This is the, this is the biocentrism as a theory, and this is, you know, Shakta Shaivism, or Kashmir Shaivism, or whatever, Tantrism as a theory, and the practice that we do is the, is the activity, the effort that we make to begin to take a hold of our mind by centering ourselves in the understanding that we are in this world to grow, by making a real commitment, not a bullshit commitment, oh, I think, oh, a real commitment to stay in contact with that intention And because of that intention, to every day have a deeper and deeper awareness of the vibrancy of our own physiological and cognitive processes. Develop through our contact alignment and flow with this energetic mechanism that underlies our physiology. We quiet our mind, dissolve it in ultimate positivity, dissolve it in beauty, ultimate positivity is beauty, dissolve it in beauty, and then there's no place for the mind to go. There's no fear in beauty, there's no you know, hope in beauty, there's no need in beauty, there's only beauty. And, and in the, the, the 
ancient tradition. Abhinava Gupta, who's the foremost writer in, of, in all of it, says it is the experience of beauty that stops the mind cold and becomes the, the eye of the needle through which we can dissolve our ego and experience the unimaginable abundance and possibility that is our own living awareness. If we understand that we're in this world to grow, then we can work our way out of any confusion. There is no confusion that is possible to contain us if we understand we are in this world to grow because we have a rock solid place to go back to and start over again from every single day. And if we're in this world to grow, every bullshit thing that's going on around us constantly is not there to torment us and it's not a bunch of stupid assholes who are fucking with us, pardon me, for, it is, you know, just the, the turbulence of and the vibrancy of living awareness, which is available for us to, to participate in, be refined by, and rise up through to experience our truest, finest self. But we, if we don't have a commitment, if we're not really working in ourselves, and of course, you know, all this crap that's flying around constantly every single day for every one of us is, you know, gets a hold of your, your mind and yanks you around this way and that way and every other which way, you know, and gets you doubting yourself and doubting everybody else and doubting everything until, you know, we actualize the piece of shit that we quietly think we are. There is enormous, and that's a silly word, unimaginable, infinite beauty in the core of every living being. By finding, by understanding, by, by pinning your mind with the understanding that you're in this world to grow, by finding and feeling your breath, and becoming aware of the respiratory, the multidimensional respiratory process that you are, you know, slowly you will begin to, to grasp the profundity of the living awareness that you are, you know, which is not different in any way, not separate in any way, from the living awareness that is the entire universe around us. I did it again. A complete teaching in under 15 minutes. <laughs> Namaste.